If you've ever used a mobile device with a touch screen, you know that touch interaction is fundamental to most of the things that you would do. Everything from playing a game to doing mobile banking to writing text messages. So there's a big functional component to just understanding how touch works on a mobile device. There's also a really great creative component of all the different things you can do to interact with a touch sensor, including painting hot dogs using hot dogs on an iPad. Let's jump into some code and take a look at how touch interaction operates specifically in P5.js. So I've got an example sketch here and I have this set up to track different touches on the screen. So I'm casting my mobile device here uh, in the window on the right and you'll be able to see as I touch my phone screen, I'm keeping track of individual touches. So one key difference to touch interaction versus using a mouse is that multiple touches can take place at the same time. And each individual touch is recorded in P5's memory as an object that has an X location or a horizontal location, a Y location or a vertical location, as well as a unique ID. So what you can see here on the screen is each touch point. Right now I'm putting four fingers on the screen, surrounded by a box, and then the unique ID of each of those touch points. Now those just happen to be sequential because they're the only touches happening on screen right now. But if I let go of some of these, so I'm gonna let go of the middle two here. All right, so now you can see we're still left with zero and three. So even though we only have two touches on screen, those remaining two are retaining their original unique IDs. So that's one piece of information that we can take out of that touches array to get access to exactly what's happening on screen. So let's break down in the code uh, exactly how this is working. So most of that behavior is controlled by this block here that's inside of my draw loop. So this is a control structure called a for loop and this is something that we're going to explain in greater depth in a different video. For now, just know that it is going to look through every touch on screen that's stored in that touches array. And for each one, it's going to pull out the X and the Y location and use it to position both the box that surrounds the touch as well as the text, uh, which is labeling each touch with its unique ID. So for example, here, we're accessing each element in that touch array and then pulling out its X property with that dot X syntax. And all the other numeric information that you see here in this block is simply for setting uh, the width and height and location of the objects that you see on screen. That information that's saved in the touches array is stored in P5's memory, regardless of whether we're using any of the touch event functions in our code. And I can see uh, down below in my code, uh, I have the touch ended, and touch moved functions, but they're commented out. So those aren't actually firing in our code. I do farther down here, I have the touch started function and that's to allow my sketch to run full screen on a mobile device. And that's something we covered in a different video. So sometimes that touches array works in conjunction with the touch event functions. Sometimes it works totally independent. It's really just up to how you set up your code. So let's focus more on those touch event functions and we can find them in the reference. So here we are in the events section and I can see there is a subsection for touch. So I've got information about that touches array. And then I have my three touch event functions. So I have touch started and this is triggered anytime a new touch begins on the screen. So it behaves very much like the mouse pressed event function. And in fact, if we run a sketch that has touch started in it on a non-touch device, the behavior defaults to mouse pressed. Next, we have touch ended. So this is triggered anytime an existing touch ends and it behaves a lot like the mouse released function. So if we try to run function touch ended on a non-touch device, it'll behave like mouse released. And last but not least, we have touch moved. So this is triggered anytime an existing touch moves its position on screen. And this behaves like the mouse dragged event function on a non-touch device. Let's jump back to our code and talk about a few key limitations of those touch event functions. So I'm gonna to come to my code here and uncomment this function touch ended. And right now I have this uh, line of code that's drawing an ellipse in the center of the screen. 
And so I'm showing this as an example of, you know, maybe I would want some sort of interaction uh, that would draw a shape to the screen when a touch is ended. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then let's refresh on my phone. And let's see if this actually behaves the way that I'd like it to. So I can see the same behavior. I can have multiple touches. They're all labeled and in the correct position. Now when I let go, I don't see that ellipse on screen. And so this illustrates one of the key properties of these touch event functions is that they're more or less instantaneous. So just like other event functions, they're only triggered for one frame after the draw loop runs. Uh, so that's not enough time to actually see an ellipse on screen. So if we wanted to have some sort of visual change triggered by one of our touch event functions, we'd need to set up something more persistent than just an ellipse that's going to appear for a 60th of a second, which is more or less invisible. So I'm gonna comment out that touch ended function and let's move on to this touch moved function. So let's see how this is gonna behave. Up at the top of my code, I have a variable called gray and that's being used to store a grayscale color value. So it's set to begin at 255 when I run the sketch and it's being used to set the fill color of the rounded rectangle that surrounds each of my touches. So while the sketch is first run, those rectangles will be filled with white. Now that I've uncommented this touch moved function, anytime I move a touch point on the screen, I'll get a random fill color that's more or less a light gray. So let's go ahead and save this and I'll refresh on my phone, take it full screen. So now you can see anytime I move, I'm getting a range of different randomly selected gray colors. So that accomplishes my first goal of using a touch event function to trigger a more or less persistent change or at least a visible change on screen. Um, but this also helps to illustrate another key characteristic of touch event functions, which is that uh, those touch events can be triggered by any touch. So right now you can see that anytime I move either of those touch points, both of my fill colors uh, are affected. Uh, so by default, that touch moved or the touch ended or touch started functions uh, are not specific enough to target individual touches. It's just any touch that's ending or moving uh, or beginning respectively. Okay, so uh, that's an overview of how to use touch event functions and the touches array in P5.js.